Let's start this review at the front, at the muzzle, which is plain and unthreaded. I uh, kind of wish that it was a threaded muzzle because this gun would just be over the top if it was. Uh, the bottom of the front sight post is railed for use with a bipod or a laser. I honestly think it's great for use with a bipod because it's so far, like it's such a high mounting position that when you've got a bipod and it's deployed, it really keeps the gun relatively low. The front sight post is plastic, though I've never really found that to be a problem since the gun never heats up enough to make it a problem. The front sight itself is drift adjustable for windage. The sights on this gun are interesting. You've got a black front post and a black rear notch. The elevation on this gun is adjusted here on the rear sight uh, post slider thing. There's a, a number down in there, right there you can see that's two, that's one. One is the lowest elevation if you can see the post, or I'm sorry not the post but the notch right there. One is the lowest, two is the second lowest, three, four, five, and six is the highest notch and then of course it rotates back down to one. At first I thought that these were distances until I was looking at it as I was spinning them and I realized this is a 22 rifle. It probably doesn't go out to 600 uh, meters. Also, there's not that much, uh, there's not that much elevation difference in between them. So it's probably just for sighting in purposes. So you have course to say the least elevation adjustments on this gun whereas you have relatively infinite windage adjustments since that front side post is drift adjustable this rail is perfect for a red dot or something like that i didn't really ever put a scope on it so i don't really know how much of a chin weld you would get if you put a scope in anything but the lowest rings made by a man Although, since it ends right here, you could have the bell of a scope hanging out here in this nice open space. So you might be able to get it mounted pretty low, so you would actually have a half-decent chin weld, or uh, cheek weld. Another interesting aspect of this gun is the rear sight, how it slides down and out of the way so you can get at this nice rail along the top of this carry handle right here. This, is, this sight system is meant to be a backup, I mean primarily as a backup, since this sight, like this rear sight, almost looks at home slid down in its retracted position as opposed to up in its useful position. You can see this weird gap right here that is completely filled in when it's down and of course you've got this nice smooth unbroken rail. The comb of the stock is raised perfectly for aligning your eyes with the sights on this rifle. And since this rear sight slides down it means that if you have a red dot installed your eye is perfectly aligned with that red dot or that extremely low mounted scope without having to add a cheek riser of any sort, which I think is a really well thought out design. The butt pad of this rifle has spacers installed, so it's actually adjustable for length of pull as well, something you don't normally find in bullpup rifles. The magazine release on this rifle is in the same place as a Tavor. The second most interesting feature on this gun is the one you're looking at. It looks like there's two magazines in this gun, which is correct. Here's the magazine that feeds the action, and here is your reload. This gun's total capacity is 24 plus 1, if you count the 12 round magazine in the action, and the 12 round reload, and one in the chamber. Whereas the primary magazine is held in place 
with a standard release like a normal magazine the reload magazine is just held in by friction friction from the polymer case the action of this gun is just a standard rimfire 22 blowback as you can hear there really isn't much unlocking going on it's just a pair of recoil springs above the bolt holding it in place being pushed back by the blowback from the rounds the action of this gun is just a standard rimfire 22 blowback as you can hear there really isn't much unlocking going the most interesting feature about this gun is not that it's a 22 bullpup rifle it's that it's a left to right side convertible 22 bullpup rifle the trigger on this bullpup is the kind of trigger that made bullpups famous in the first place it is long creepy stagey terrible the safety on this gun is actually really well thought out as you can see it's actuated on both sides and also easily seen on both sides plus from on top in a firing position the grip on this gun is interesting it seems to be a grip from a pistol that Walther produced at some point in time or maybe still produces that they just kind of copied off of that gun and then pasted into this one although it does have a nice little slightly textured rubber grippy part right here in the side of this uh, thumb hole you might call it otherwise ergonomically it's all right it's got these rubber same texture as the as the pistol grip inserts on the forward part of the stock it's got this rubber insert texture here it's like all bull pups it's relatively rear heavy except on this gun it seems like it's a little heavier than it the reason that the walther g22 has so much weight in the rear is because obviously the action is in the rear but more importantly it's because the action is made out of a couple of relatively large complex cast metal parts they make the gun very simple they make the gun very reliable they just happen to make it very heavy while some people would look at that as a flaw, I don't really think that it takes back that much from the design. And since they make the gun pretty reliable, I've had really zero problems with it, I think the weight is worth it. In conclusion, I give this gun 3.5 stars out of 5. The main reason for that is the cost of magazines. Since this gun went out of production a couple years ago, the cost of magazines has skyrocketed. I looked online and the only reliable information I could find was used magazine, uh, not used, completed magazine auctions online. And they had single magazines going for well over $100. And $100 for a 12 round rimfire magazine for one rifle I'm not taking part in that, so that really, really hurts it on the likability scale. But, that being said, this gun is amazingly fun to shoot. Being a left-handed shooter, being able to convert it to left hand, that's a huge win for me, and that's why it has such a high scale. It's not the lightest gun around, it's not necessarily the prettiest gun around, but it's very functional, it's very useful especially if you're left-handed like me and you like bullpups um if the muzzle was threaded and you could buy magazines affordable magazines for it i would overlook the trigger and give this thing a five out of five but as it sits i'll have to give it a three and a half out of five that being said if you don't mind it being a little heavy for a 22 you don't mind only having two magazines for it, and you don't mind never suppressing it, this gun is a great, great buy.